Give us a sense of where we are right now, because the rhetoric seems really troubling. I think it's important to um, know that um, Hong Kong is neuralgic to, uh, to China. I was at a, a summit between President Obama and President Xi Jinping, and I was struck with that back then, 2014, just how strongly Xi Jinping was upset with potential American interference in Hong Kong. It, it bothered him more than any other subject during that summit. It's um, Hong Kong, it's Taiwan, it's Xinjiang, it's Tibet. Those are such strong core issues for China, and they will do whatever it takes to maintain as much control over those areas as they possibly can. Now, I, th I think, frankly, that if China feels a little more emboldened now by taking this action, which clearly does violate the basic law in Hong Kong, more emboldened because the United States has withdrawn so much from the world scene. It's withdrawn from TPP. It's withdrawn from you know, under America first. It does not quite have quite the same power and influence worldwide as it may have had uh, several years ago, and Xi Jinping had seen that. This action, frankly, it just is quite ominous because um, there's not much the United States can do about it. Um, we can try to rally international opinion. I don't think that's going to have much effect. Add to that, um, it's going to further drive a wedge between Taiwan and China because um, Taiwan is very sympathetic to Hong Kong. And uh, the more Taiwan sympathetic with Hong Kong, more of that's going to upset China and create even greater tension between China and, uh, and Taiwan. It's going to hurt business in Taiwan, clearly. It's going to hurt American business, too. But the, really what this comes down to is um, the realization that China is here. China's not going anywhere. China's proud. China's defiant. And we Americans have to do a better job figuring out how to deal with this phenomenon, how to deal with this big country, China how we get their respect, because we have to figure out some way to deal with them. They're not going anywhere. They're not going to leave the planet. We're not going anywhere. We're here. So we have to figure out how to, how to coexist in a much right. more sound way. Well, there's a lot of talk going on in Washington, as you know, about things that maybe the United States might do to influence Beijing. You just said that it's so important to Beijing, it's not clear anything's going to work, but they've talked about things like the autonomous status, changing their trade status. They've talked about delisting Chinese companies. In the New York Times today, there was even some speculation maybe we would really interfere with bank relationships. That is to say that U.S. banks couldn't deal with Hong Kong banks. Would any of those have an effect with Beijing? I don't think so. Uh, Be Beijing's made up its mind. It's going to weather the storm, and it feels it can weather the storm without too much difficulty. Um, it's, it's, you know, as we know, under the handover in 1997, Hong Kong was to revert to China in 2047. Xi Jinping has just accelerated that. I mean, it clearly has violated uh, the, the basic law, the terms of the handover, but. Basically, all these actions that we are considering are, are going to hurt um, uh, China a bit. They'll hurt U.S. a bit. They'll hurt Hong Kong a bit. They'll hurt world trade a bit. But they're not going to force Beijing to change its mind. Beijing's made up its mind. But it's going to slowly, slowly, gradually take over Hong Kong and, and merge it in with southern China. What does that say about investments in Taiwan? I mean, I'm sorry, in Hong Kong, because there are enormous Western investments in Hong Kong, a lot of operations for U.S. banks and others there. That really suggests that those investments are, are, are a melting asset, frankly. Well, I, the question is how quickly they melt. It probably depends upon the actual provisions of this national security law, which has not yet been passed. And it depends on the implementation and the definition of terms. But clearly, the passage of the, the law by China as it affects Hong Kong is going to cause a lot more Beijing control over Hong Kong, and it's going to undermine significantly the rule of law. I think, frankly, Beijing is going to just tighten the noose slowly, slowly, slowly. They want to create too much of a stir, but the, the writing's on the wall. It's clear that over time, the investments in Hong Kong are going to have to Investors in Hong Kong have to figure out, do they want to work with China? Do uh, they not want to work, not with, work with China? Want to leave? Can they deal with China? You know, a lot of American investors are in China, not just Hong Kong, but in China, and do very well. They develop relationships. 
that are not threatening to China. So it's a, a lot of decisions are going to have to be made. But bottom line, the, the atmospherics of this are not good. Um, it's, it pushes us more toward a kind of decoupling, right. uh, pushes us more toward a, a kind of a cold war. And I just hope that right. we can, the cooler heads prevail. We don't do things that, are, that cause more problems they're going to solve. Ambassador Walker, you, of course, are a lifelong Democrat. At this point, do you see any difference at all between the Democrats' position with respect to China and the Republicans? Or are they, is this one place where there's true bipartisan agreement? There is generally true bipartisan agreement. I think the one difference you'll see is a, <clears throat> that under a Trump presidency, if he gets reelected, he'll be more of the same. If Biden's um, elected president, there'll still be a, a strong bipartisan concern and almost an antagonistic approach toward China. The difference will be that under a Biden presidency, it'll be more stable. That is, President Biden will not change his mind as often as President Trump does. And I think under a, a Biden presidency, presidency, Beijing will think, well, gee, we can deal with this guy. They don't like us. They're tough with us. But a deal is a deal with him. Whereas we try to deal with Trump, we don't know if we have a deal. That'd be the difference.